church. Let's find a hard scripture. Birdman, John 3.16. John 3.16. People talking often about uh, how, and I, I hear preachers say, kind of slam church folk about being illiterate when it comes to scripture. There's no reason for us to be illiterate. We have so many uh, avenues. I have two or three Bibles. I have several Bible apps. I have opportunities. But I was telling my pastor this morning, when he asked, he said, what's your, what, what's your preacher, little buddy? And uh, I said, John 3, 16. Oh, you can't get better than that. And I said, I can't find it. I can't find better than this verse. This is one of the most powerful verses. As a matter of fact, it is the first verse I did in my mind, Katie, that I remember remembering. You know, and I remember it out of the old King James, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I had to look up that word, you know, begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son to beat us up, condemn us. That's not why he sent his son. So when I walk through this scripture, I see exceptional. Everybody say exceptional. It's exceptional all through. I, I, it's just, it's, it's an amazing thing. I have, um, I'm hitting a place, you know, my next birthday in a few months, I'll be 63 years old. And it, it fascinates me uh, to be in this stage of life. I'm learning so much about what some of you elderly have talked about, uh, you know. And again, uh, I've, I've made this joke, but it, it's not a joke. When I, uh, when I bend down with my knees, it sounds like... Uh, uh, goat chewing aluminum foil, you know, and I think to myself, if you, as, as you're young, listen to me, young people, take care of your health, because many of us were young, and we thought we'd never wear out, and we rode hard, man, and we pressed it, we didn't go to doctors, we didn't go to dentists, you know, we didn't, we didn't see uh, different things, and next thing you know, we hit a certain age, Kenny, and we realized that this thing's falling apart. You know, it, it affects us. Uh, can I tell the young people something else in here? Use your phone and call people. Amen. I do text. I do message. But it ain't the same. I want to hear a voice. I want to hear some clarity. I want to know exactly what you mean when you said uh, BL for LOL or where I got to ask my daughter, what did these initials mean when they sent me this? Because I have no idea. L M something another. I don't know what all these. Are. So please call people and use your voice. Learn math, <laughs> not algebra, not geometry. Plus minus math. Uh, what's the other word? Um, just learn it. it. It's just frustrating to go into a restaurant, or especially fast food, and they stare at you when you, like, I give them money, and I give them some change so they'll give me back correct dollars, and they look at me like they don't know what they're doing. Look, you, you do. You take all kind of fancy maths in school. Just figure out the simple stuff. Please. I know one in ten of you is just the only ones who are listening. The rest of you didn't shut me off when I said, please call. <laughs> you take care of your health. Learn math. Call us. Amen? Age will change you. It changes you. A frog said to the old man by the fishing pond, if you'll kiss me three times, I will become a beautiful blonde, and I'll love you forever. There was silence. And the frog said, hello, hello, did you hear what I said? The old man reached down, picked up the frog, and put her in his overalls. And at that point, the frog said, hey, what are you doing? And the old man said, this time of my life, I'd rather have a talking frog than a blonde. <laughs> Please, all you blondes, don't be offended. I could have said brunette. It's just easier to talk blonde, okay? Just... I know when I talk blonde, I've got to explain it twice, but still. John 3, 16. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever, whosoever, you and me, believes in him, we won't perish, but have everlasting life. We understand the word perish actually doesn't mean to be totally wiped or annihilated. It means hell. It means to be banished. It means to be put away from him. And God said, I, I don't want that for you. So I sent my son. Understand it's a divine mystery. You can't separate Father, Son, Holy Ghost. They, they're all three together. They're, they're like a really good cherry pie. And you cut it, take the slice out, and it all runs back together again. That's a good cherry pie right there, my man, Rich. It's amazing. It's an exceptional text. Father, I thank you for your word. These lips of mine are not perfect. They've said wrong things. They've hurt people. They've slipped at times and shouldn't have said that. Should have kept my mind out of gear. Instead, it happened. But on this morning, I ask you to use these lips to share such a beautiful word to such a great people. In Jesus' name, amen. It's an exceptional text. For God so loved the world. There's no love greater. They said, Mama, I don't care how much you, Grandma, I don't care, Grandpa, I don't care. There's no love greater than the father who sent his son, child to a pet or parent, parent to kid, spouse to spouse. Romans 5, 8 says, but God demonstrated his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, not after we got saved, but when I was all really, really messed up, amen, that Jesus died for me. God's love is exceptional because of its purpose. Listen, it delivers from sin. Great love towards God equals strong resistance towards sin. Amen. It delivers us from sin. When I love God, it ain't, it ain't that, hey, you're going to hell if you don't quit that. No, no, no. If you really love God, it gives you a resistance towards sin. Because I don't want to hurt him or cause a, a shame on his name. So it brings this deliverance into your life. It heals hurts and disappointments. When you trust that he loves you that much, you know that all things work together for good. Amen. You know that he loves you, man. Amen. And because of that, it begins to heal the hurts in your life. It takes away. I don't know how this thing's going to end. Everybody here has been disappointed. If you live long enough, somebody disappointed you. You've been hurt. Hurting people hurt people. So you've got to deal with the hurt that's inside of you. So when it happens, you've got to ask yourself, God, can you help me through this? And he says, listen, I'm telling you again that, that if you believe in me and you understand my love for you, that all things will work together for good. Amen. And it means the broken hearts. It means broken hearts. Jesus came into this world to mend broken hearts. Amen. He said it in the book of Luke. He said it's why he's here. He meant to mend the brokenhearted. So he came to do that for us. That's why he loves us. So God's love, it reaches upward to the proud. Have you ever felt arrogant? No, 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 no that's not for you. Have you ever seen anybody arrogant? <laughs> Amen. Have you ever seen it? arrogance, man? Arrogance, pride comes before a fall. You get all puffed up. Well, God's love has this way of humbling you. Amen. Bringing you back down to earth. God's love reaches downward to the depressed. Amen. To bring them up. It's very important. We need this more now than ever. Prolonged depression brings on the spirit of suicide. When you get it, I, everybody at one time or another gets depressed. A little bit oppressed. As a believer, you want to make sure that, that you understand you'll never be possessed by anything other than the Spirit of God. Can I get an amen? amen? Amen. I do not believe that believers in Christ can be possessed of the devil. I do believe they can be oppressed. I believe they can have an oppression on it. I believe depression can come and last. But hear me. I've said this for how many years? Life is this. Life is not this. I wish life was more this. Amen. And if it is anything like this, I know a lot of you go whoop, 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 whoop. But life is literally this way, circular. And so when I find life, I mean, there are times I'm at the top. Man, I got to ride my Harley a couple of times this week. When I'm on that bike, all of a sudden I can be down here, and then when that wind starts running through my hair, I get right up here real quick. I get to smiling. I feel the freedom. It's an amazing thing. When, when, when life is here, when, when good things are happening, when your kids all finally get it, a job. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Jim. You at the top. Can I get an Amen. Amen. You just feel it. You're just right here. But then life does this, and you come back down. And why do you say that, Pastor? Because I saw the life of King David. I saw him take out Goliath and then run. 
I saw him do great things, amen, and then get in the cave. I saw Elijah take out the prophets of Baal, then go hide in the cave and think that that one woman was going to take his life, Jezebel. I've seen life through this over and over. So here's what I'm going to tell you. That when you hit this bottom place, give it a day. Give it a day. Give it a little time. Ask God, Lord, lift this depression off me. Find somebody that makes you laugh. Some folk, you, they ain't even got to talk. You can just look at them and start laughing. <laughs> Find those people in your life. Call them up on the phone. Shock them. Go, hey, why'd you call me? I just want to hear your voice. <laughs> and then start laughing. Because laughter doth good like a Madison, amen. It begins to heal you up. It begins to bless you. So understand that his love will reach down to you, amen, and begin to pull you out so that you don't stay in depression. God's love reaches inward to our affections and straightens the twisted knots. Sometimes even as believers, we ain't thinking right. I, sometimes I look at somebody that's no, no, supposed to know Jesus 25, 30 years, and I think to myself, you ain't thinking right. Amen. What you thinking right? It's not even right. You know, you, why you get angry all the time? You've been serving God all this time and you still got anger issues? Anger that goes to seed going to cause you issues, man. It's going gonna, it's gonna to put hatred in your heart. It's going to make bitterness in you. You ain't thinking right. So the Word of God, the love of God reaches inside of us and begins to take those knots and untwist them. Uh, there's something that... Uh, if you don't straighten up an extension cord, it's going to have knots in it. If you don't take the time to learn how to roll that thing from palm to elbow. Hello. Some of you going, oh, that's how it works. <laughs> if you don't take the time to roll that thing up correctly, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. It's going to be a knot. And one day you're going to reach in there to get it, and you're going to need to straighten that thing out real quick. It's going to be not, 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 not. So when it gets tight, learn how to straighten life out when you can. Can I get an amen? Don't let it go. God, God's love reaches outward to all humankind. And that's what we want to do, not just for the car show, but every week, every day we can, reach outward to the world. Well, you know, we think like God only loves Americans. Wrong. For God so loved the world. Say it again. For God so loved the world. And everybody in the world, every religion, every race, every ethnicity. And somebody said, well, you know what this ain't going on in Israel? Jesus is coming back soon. No, he's not. We'll say it again. Jesus is not coming back soon because they're fighting against Israel. They always want to be fighting against Israel. Yeah. It's just the way it is. When will Jesus come back? You know what Jesus told us? When this gospel has been preached to the ends of the world and all the people groups have heard it. There are thousands of people groups have never heard the name Jesus. Until we reach them, he said, I ain't coming back. So you can look at it, and you can tell people, and you've all been prophetic utterances that you've been getting sent. Amen. And everybody talking about Jesus coming back. You need to live in such a way that if he does, it's all right. Yeah, come on. Hopefully, though, this thing over there shook you up a little bit. Amen. Get, get you right. Oh, he loves us. Oh, he loves us. His, his love is in action. He told his own disciples in John 13, amen, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour, his season was coming to an end, amen, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the very end. I want you to catch what he said here. Jesus said he knew that his hour had come. He knew that, and that's why I always say, God, give me a heads up. Just let me know when you think it's time for me to split. I just need a little bit. Just a little bit more time, a few minutes, 10 minutes, hour, whatever. I'll take what you give me. Amen. You gave me this life. But it says here that he, he knew he should depart. He didn't say, I'm going to die. He said, I'm departing. When you start thinking like Jesus in this book, you understand a little bit different. That's why people think you're really weird. Amen. Because you're not planning on dying. You're planning on splitting. Come on, right. Amen. You're heading upward. You're departing out of here. That's what Jesus, he knew. Yeah, you put me in a tomb. You can deal, crucify this body. But the bottom line is, I'm going to go be with the Father. Amen. And I'll have a new, new body. The Amplified Bible said it like this. He loved him to the very last and to the highest degree. When he loves you, you his. You his. Amen. And that's it. And he loves you. Like The Message Bible says, having loved his dear companions, he continued to love them right to the end. Barclay's scripture said he decided to show them what his love was like in, in, in a way which 
went to the ultimate limit. That's Jesus. Amen. He loved them like it. And not only that, that he gave his one and only son. That's an exceptional gift. Yeah. Amen. Many great gifts are given. I've known of houses given and vehicles given and money given, gifts of education, respect when somebody calls you sir or ma'am. That's a gift of respect. Thank you. Appreciation that thanks in action. But God gave the greatest gift, his one and only son. I'm telling you, kings, presidents, not even angels could atone for our sins. Only Christ's blood was effective. That's a gift. Everybody say gift. I had somebody actually tell me yesterday, they said, listen, pastor, I've got a gift for you. I've got something I want to give you. As a matter of fact, it's a, it's a jacket, and on the back of the jacket, and this was what was prophetic, it says John 3, 16. I said, come on, man, that sounds good. And then they said, I just want you to give me a gun for it. <laughs> I'm telling you a true story right now. And when they told me that, I said, then that ain't a gift. That's called a trade. Amen. And I said, by the way, what size is the jacket? They said, it's large. I said, I can't wear it. I miss the large. I can't even wear the jacket, and you want me to give you a gun. Now, he, didn't, he didn't even ask me what, what size was the gun. <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. Well, when he gets the BB gun, he's going to know real quick. I'll trade you. <laughs> Y'all quit. A gift. A gift is something given willingly to someone without payment or compensation. When he gave his gift of his son, he gave his son willingly. And he didn't ask for compensation back. He didn't ask for you to uh, help people or do this or do that. We do it because we are saved. Can I get an amen? 2 Corinthians 9, 14. And in their prayers and for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for this, his indescribable gift. You can't even describe this gift. As I was working this thing out, I couldn't, even, I was trying to write, I, I can't describe it. It's, it's overwhelming. He gave me a gift. When I stare at that at Christmas time and I see them packages wrapped, I don't go over to somebody and say, hey, uh, Pastor David, what'd you get me? Well, he might as well not even wrapped it. Hello? If the kids are asking you, what would you get me? They don't even need to rest. Listen, it's, it, it's no compensation. Now, here's the other thing. Do you know how many Christmases or how many birthdays or how many just whatever because I wanted to gave gifts to my children and friends in my life that I did it not because they were acting right? I'm not looking. I'm looking over here. Do you understand that God gave you a gift and it wasn't because you were acting right? right. It's because you simply believed. I'm telling you, it's an exceptional salvation we've got. Amen. And this verse lays it out. 1 John 3, 1. How great the love the Father has lavished. You know what lavished is? That, that's when you get in the, in, 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 in the shower and you, and you get a big old handful of and you lather up until they eat nothing left but soap all over you. You didn't pay for the soap. Come on, can I get an amen? You don't, and you lather all that soap, and it's just all, and, and if you could see yourself in the mirror, don't look, amen. It's, you just, you soaped up, every, you lavished yourself. It's all over you. Or, 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 maybe, or maybe you get ready to, to go somewhere, and you pull the perfume out of quick, 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 quick. You lavished yourself. And 40 yards away, people know you're coming. <laughs> mm. That's what he did when he lavished you. Everybody should know you've been lavished. Amen. You've been blessed. You've been covered by the, the love of God. The love the Father's lavished on us. That we should be called the children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. So the fact that he calls his kids a gift. To, to understand that I am his child is a gift. When God adopted you, you got a gift. He didn't have to adopt you. See, some are just born in. You didn't have no choice. But when you get born again, you're adopted. The Father chose you. It's exceptional faith. Everybody say faith. That whosoever believes in him 
believes in him should not perish. Oh, that's pretty simple. All I got to do is, that's why people struggle. They, they think, well, what do I got to do to get this? You got to believe. You, everybody say believe. believe. It's harder than you think. It's harder than, I said it's harder than you think to believe. So first off, I believe that I am saved. Faith defined, Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for, reassurance or assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients or the Old Testament prophets and believers were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was invisible or what was visible. In other words, the greatest something God can use is nothing. All God needed was a little nothing in order to create something. Amen. It was chaotic. It was nothing out there. He spoke and the world was. Jesus did all that. Amen. For in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. So we realize that this Father, Son, Holy Ghost situation here, amen, there was a speaking forth and the world was. You'll read all through the New Testament, the Word, I mean the Old Testament, the beginning in Genesis, us, let us, let us, let us. You'll see us all over the place. Us means more than one. Can I get an Amen. So we see that, that, that trinity of, of God at, at work here. But when I read this, this is what the ancients were commended for. And people that tell me, they, how were the Old Testament people saved? How did, they didn't have Jesus back then. By faith. By faith they were believing that God was going to do something. David believed it. Abraham believed it. Rahab believed it. A, amen. Naomi believed it. They believed forward. We believe looking back. The King James Version says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I've not seen it out. I've not seen it yet. Verse 6 says, And without faith, it's impossible to please God. If I cannot believe that I'm saved, if I'm always doubting in the dark what God showed me in the light, amen, all of a sudden I can't please God. Because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. So this is the hard part for people. They say, Well, how do you know God exists? I believe. I believe like the air I just sucked into my lungs. I believe. Amen. I just believe. Because I, I, he changed my life. I just believe. Because there's nothing else out there in this universe that could have created us. And created the beautiful things of earth. And when I stare up at the stars at night, I realize God did that for us. Amen. The earth is his footstool. The heavens. Amen. It's just like I, I look up there and I realize, God, you did all this for us. And we're trying to explore it. We're trying to find God. We're trying to do this thing. and that. He says, all you got to do is believe. And it changes your life. It shifts everything. Why is faith so important? Because your faith fights for you. Jesus even told Peter that I pray for you that your faith won't fail. Amen. It's your faith. Your faith is so important. Everybody say faith. faith. Try to build something in you. Faith come by hearing and hearing the word of God. Amen. The, I, I, look here. Take your finger, stick it in your ear. Come on. Listen to me. <laughs> I want you to hear what I'm saying. Because your faith is so important. This week, you're, you're going to be tested. So your faith is important. Faith fights facts. But we're going to die. No. We're going to live forever. That's what I read. Amen. I'm going to live again. And so it fights facts. I'm going to see people again. Faith fights my feelings. Well, I don't feel saved. <laughs> of course you don't. Because maybe you acted out, you did something wrong, you feel like you've, you've backslid something. You may not feel saved. But I'm telling you, faith says you are. So I are. Everybody say I are. I'll tell you something else. Faith fights your fear. As important as it catches. In all life, there's different stages of fear. Oh, when I was a kid, fearless. Fearless. My brother and I, we'd stack in bricks, and we'd put that, 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 that tube of 12 on there, and we'd run that bicycle as fast as we could down that hill and jump that thing. Fearless. I'd take my sister's bike and put it up in the woods, take off down that thing without a chain on it. You know what happens when you ain't got a chain on a bicycle? You say, well, you don't go to it. No, you ain't got no brakes. <laughs> we ain't talking about this fancy stuff. We didn't have fancy stuff. I, I learned to ride my sister's bike. And I'll be honest with you, a sister's bike should be a boy's bike. <laughs> Especially when you're learning. Big old bike up in the hill. My brother pushed me. Boy, I come flying down through there. I passed Dad's house. I, now I'm heading toward Granny's house, which means I'm heading right toward Flatwoods Road. And I got to turn that bike. Amen. Fearless. I turned that bike right around my Granny's little log cabin, went right up under her barbed wire fence, ripped my shirt right off my back. But I was smart enough to slide the bike <laughs> under the fence. Fearless. Reached through a hedge row, grab a little chicken, hold it next to my chest. And wait just 30 seconds till the mother come right through there and flog the fire out of me. Fearless. 
Lay down on the ground and act dead while the buzzards move around you. Be still, be still, be still. Here they come. Wait till they come right down on you. And right before you think I'm lying. I ain't lying. Fearless. That buzzard comes right down on you and right before they get to you. Ha! Scare that buzzard. <laughs> Send them right back. You don't, yeah, you, y'all play too many video games. Y'all need to get out. <laughs> Fearless as a kid. Amen. That's how we were. And then you get 18 and all of a sudden things begin to shift in you. See, anxiety changes at different ages. It changes. When you become 18, it's about your identity. When you hit your, your mid-20s, it's about your appearance. When you get a little older, into your mid-20s, it's, it's in, impression. By the time you hit 30, you're trying to get a career. Then you move in after mid-30s, you're looking for a salary. How much am I going to make? And then by the time you get near 40, it's about job security. I got to start working toward a retirement. I got to start doing something here. By the time you, you, you're in your 40s, you better be having your children. Hopefully by then, they're getting out the house. My life, I was 39 when I had my last kid. Yeah, no. Fearless. <laughs> Mid-40s, you, you, it's about purpose in life. And by the time you hit 50, it's about your health and peace. Worry is fear exposed. When I hear people say, I worry, you're telling me you ain't got no faith. I said, you're telling me you ain't got no faith because you're worrying. Because worry exposes your fear. You're always worrying. I can't. My daughter works in a prison. I can't always worry about my daughter. I can't do it. Katie's moved 30 miles from me. I can't worry. Amen. Jill, who knows what she's doing. <laughs> my son Judah, he's homeless right now. He, he lives wherever he can. So when he shows up, I just throw him in a cabin. Until he goes back out on the job somewhere where he lives in a hotel. Got another son that's so quiet, you don't even know he's there. I go three days over the weekend. I don't even know if he's alive or not. <laughs> Till Tuesday morning comes, he tells me I'm running late for work. <laughs> yeah, he works for me. <laughs> yeah. There are main categories of fear. We're talking about faith and fear here. Let me just walk you through this. Fear, fear, poverty, we get fearful of poverty. Criticism. Fear. Loss of love, we're afraid. Illness, that which, listen, the scripture said, that which I, oh, help me with the rest of this verse. That which I feared has come upon me. Thank you, Renee. Uh, I can read lips. Uh, that which I feared has come upon me. So when I fear, so, even though it ain't real, it got on me. I, I didn't even think it was out there, but it jumped all over me. I, I, I was afraid I'd be, I'd be loveless the rest of my life, and here I am. Amen. I was afraid I was going to be po- full of poverty, and here I am. Amen. I was afraid I was going to get cancer, and here I am. I ain't saying just because you got cancer means you're afraid. I'm just telling you what you're afraid of. Gets, so I'm careful when I start thinking a bad thought. I got to get that thought out of my head. Amen. You know, old age. <laughs> we, we, but there ain't nothing to do about it. If you, can, if you get another day, ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen. You just keep on living. A little Grecian formula. <laughs> a little something you can do about it, but not much. Amen. And the last one, death. It's the greatest fear of all, dying. And yet Jesus conquered death. And I'm telling you, you live well, learn to die well. Learn how to handle it. Keep walking, preacher. All right. So all fear is built on a lie. You destroy the lie, the fear dies. All fear is built on a lie. That's what Satan, he's the father of lies. He's the father of fear. Amen. We fix to have a holiday of fear. I don't celebrate this holiday as much as me. I just can't do it. It just, I, just, I, I ain't into it. Because there's some real wickedness on the other side of this thing. So be, beware of it. So let me walk you through something here real quick. Let's go to the next thing here. Fear, 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 fear. Next slide. Fear makes us defensive. We are always quick to react rather than respond. Faith makes us offensive. We get become proactive, believing for a better future. Next slide. Fear makes us distant. We put up walls around us and close everybody out. When I'm afraid, hey, I ain't seen you. Yeah, you ain't answering your phone. Amen. You're not not answering your door. So fear puts us puts walls around. Faith makes us draw near to God. It pulls us to God, believing for the best in people. 
So we're able to start connecting with them and talk to them. Fear makes us demanding. Take, take us of others, time and resources. Amen. See, fear always got to be in control. We got to control things all the time because we're afraid. We're holding on. Controllers are always full of fear. But faith makes us givers, knowing that when we sow, we reap. God's in control. I can't control every situation. I can't control people. Amen. So God's in control of that. Can I get an amen? I got to keep moving here. So the opposite of fear, you sung it in the second song today, and I felt, I felt that. I felt God say, oh, that was a confirmation there, Jojo. Amen. It was in, for God so loved, he gave his son. There is no fear in love, but perfect love. Cast out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. So love begins to dispel fear. I, I rem I'll never forget that commercial where they put that oil in that water and they drop that Dawn dishwashing detergent in it. As soon as it hits, the oil goes whoop. That's what love do. Love do that. It causes fear to run away. It's the love of God. It ain't you getting your courage up. Amen. It got nothing to do. You say, I got to get more courage. No, I need more love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, whosoever. Believe, believe. My belief takes out the fear out of my life. Fear blocks us from a brighter future, stronger relationships, and opportunities. Psalm 27, 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Light, light, darkness, darkness, darkness is where the fear hides. But the Lord is my light. That's where my faith is. Amen. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Okay, got to start closing here. An exceptional life. Will have everlasting life. How many love your life? I love life. I embrace life. I'm excited about tomorrow. And if I get a Tuesday, I'm going to be excited about a Tuesday. Amen. I'm moving through the week. I'm just excited about life. And if you don't love life, you, you, got, you got to take this verse and start sharing it within your heart. I was only kidding, Dave. It's a long close. Amen. Look here. Everlasting life. There's no greater life than everlasting. Why is that? Because it's going to last forever. <laughs> it's just simple math. Romans 8. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Trouble? Hardship? Persecution? Famine? Nakedness? Danger? Sword? This is Paul talking, and he's sharing with us about separation and this is what bothers me you said it i said david when you said that somebody gets offended after 20 30 40 years of relationship and you separated from them. you walked away from god because you got offended you got your feelings hurt because you thought somebody was supposed to call you text you instagram you or like your facebook post and you just that's it Lost it. Paul puts a total different. He said, let me tell you, there ain't nothing should separate you from the love of God. Nothing should separate. Not trouble. Not hardship. Depression. None of that. Persecution? Huh. How about famine when, you, when there's no food in the land? How about when you ain't even got no clothes? Or somebody's after you with a pocket knife. For it's written... For your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Uh-uh. And all these things. We're more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels or demons, neither the present or the future, nor any power, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to start to separate us from the love of God. That's in Christ Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him wouldn't perish but have everlasting life. My God, what an exceptional salvation we have. What a wonderful salvation God has given us. He has blessed us given us his word and then when Jesus showed up it was an exceptional fight so, so Jesus came to die now he didn't just come to die for us he had a fight to deal with he had a purpose why he came 1 John 3 8 
He who does what is sinful is of the devil because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. Jesus came to defeat Satan. I've said this to you before. He defeated him and he disarmed him. That devil ain't got no feet and he ain't got no arms. All he's got is an accusation of a mouth. And he accuses you over and over again. Jesus said, I came to destroy him. I came with a mission, man. Now, hold on. I ain't done yet. I also came to save sinners. Here's a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And Paul said this. He's talking to his spiritual son. He says to Timothy, he says, I'm the worst. I'm the worst. I can see Paul saying that because of the death of Stephen, the young disciple who was stoned to death, that he carried out a diabolical plot that was demonic to kill Christians. And this is what bothers me about Israel, the Jewish nation. Why did everybody want to just kill them? For, for thousands and thousands of years, trying to wipe out God's people. And I ain't saying they're perfect in any shape, fashion, form. But it just blows my mind, the hatred. Why you hate people? Why do certain white folk hate black people? Why certain black folk hate brown people? Why certain brown folk hate yellow Asian people? Why, why the hatred? Why, why did I see in, over in California uh, the uh, African Americans attacking Asian people? Why? And, why what did, and I see this and I think, it ain't got nothing to do with color or ethnicity. There is a devil running loose in the hearts and minds of people that's caused him to hate. And it's gone back historically over and over because grandpa and great grandpa and back, 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 back. See, I was raised in an area that was one time the headquarters of the Ku Klux Klan. And yet in my life, I had a lot of black friends. Roe T. Thompson. I don't even know how to spell Roe T. I don't know where he got his name from. Until I got here to Texas and found out about Rotel Tomatoes. <laughs> he was my, one of my best friends in high school. I have no idea where hatred comes from. But I can tell you this, I know who gets rid of it. Come on. It's the love of Jesus that takes hate out. Takes it away from us. He said, I came to destroy that devil in all of our lives. And I came to save sinners which I was the worst. Heads bowed, eyes closed. If you don't have the confidence in your heart right now, and I'm talking to those also online, you don't have the confidence in your life right now. Fear has built a hold on you. And I'm telling you again, it's faith that breaks that. You've got to believe that God loves you. And that love, that love, will break down every hardship. It will break down every wall. That love will drive out every fear if you'll believe it this morning. Say, Pastor, you were talking to me today. I came to receive that in Jesus' name. Put your hand up right now if I'm talking to you right now. Father, in Jesus' name, those hands that are lifted, remove fear from their lives. Fear of the future, fear of their children, fear of age, fear of death. Take that fear away. We believe, Lord, that you sent your son that we would no longer have to live in fear. I thank you for doing it, and I ask you to do it in Jesus' name. And everyone say it. Amen. 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 I don't need to clap, but those that are watching online need to know y'all got it. <laughs> Amen. H, I've asked HD to be over the, the tractor hauling. HD, stand up so everybody, I think everybody knows who you are. But if you would like to uh, help us drive a tractor out on Muscle Car Sunday, which is on the 12th of November, uh, I know we'll have probably two tractors. Pastor David thinks so, two tractors and trailers that we can put together. Amen. Is, who else will help HD out on that day? Tommy, thank you, Tommy. You will, thank you. You can't drive one just yet. Anyone else say, I, I'll drive a tractor. I need to drive a tractor. 
So I'm going to throw some leaders up on the overhead next week, and I'm going to ask you, and I'm going to ask those leaders to find you. We got to have we got to have trash pickup. We got barbecue. We got to cook, amen, and prepare for. I'm going to need help on this uh, putting together this message. Come on, Jesus, amen. I know I'm fixing to set her down. Uh, our servant leaders will come up. That our children's ministry, and a lot of sometimes, guys, I know you say, Well, we don't have church over here in Crosby on that day. I know because it's about assimilating and reaching people. If you know somebody with a hot rod or a motorcycle, please invite them out that day. Pray for the weather that I know it's a little bit late. Next year, it'll be back in April again. See, it was COVID that knocked us into the fall, but now we got to get back to April next year. Amen. And I know it's a family day. We're going to have stuff for the kids all over. We've got pet and zoo. But here's the, here's the thing about us that's different. We don't charge nothing. We don't ask you to buy anything. The youth may sell a, a soda. Uh, the kids will sell sodas. But other than that, and that's for the help of the camp. But other than that, we're going to be giving away snow cones and all kinds of stuff to, at the thing. We just do it. I've never wanted to use it as a vendor come and sell you stuff here thing. I know, in other churches, I don't condemn them. You know, if y'all need to make money, you go ahead. But that's not how we make money. This is how the finances are given in this house. Because people are tithers and they're givers. Amen. So if you need a tither or offer an envelope, it should be right there in front of you. You should have probably already made out your check. Not beating you up, but just go ahead. Amen. And if a day ever comes where we get rid of all these pews and bring them to Charlie's house. <laughs> We'll be getting new chairs in here and raising finances for chairs. Can you get an amen? Amen. amen. I want to tell you, this will make a great banquet hall in here. We can do a lot of stuff inside this building. Amen. But right now, it's only used for you sitting on Sunday morning. We need to do a little bit more. But all these pews will go to Charlie's house. Amen. <laughs> As we give today, we're believing God for? Hours more money, less hours. Benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail. Gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, destimonies, royalty received, success to the kingdom. All right, everybody say this with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. But whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. My friend, that's the gospel in one verse. My wife asked me to go through this whole little bit here for you, so I'm going to do it. November the 2nd through the 8th.